seems like it might be a good time to talk a little bit more about tournament structures. I had an interesting idea, well, an idea that I think is interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and present it here. So what I noticed in the World Cup, this is the 2022 World Cup in case anyone's watching this in the distant future. Uh, in the knockout rounds, so from the round of 16 on, there were five games out of the 15 that they played, not counting the third place game, that were not decided within the regulation 90 minutes. They had to go to extra time to be decided. Of those five games, zero of them were actually decided by the 30 minutes of extra time period. All of them had to go on to penalty kicks. Um, it may not surprise you that I don't care for penalty kicks as a tie-breaking method. Um, I know it's not going anywhere. For whatever reason, everybody has decided that the, the awesome intensity of watching the penalty kicks is what they want. Uh, me, I would rather see them actually decide the game by playing the game that is to be played. Now, soccer is especially difficult to break the tie. Um, mainly because the number of goals scored is very low. And as I've mentioned before, I don't mind that there's not a ton of goals in soccer. I think that's fine, all right? But it does make it hard to break ties. Um, I'm actually fine with the idea that we're playing a game where, you know, a third of the games end up in draws. Uh, and I don't mind that in the group stages, the draws count as draws. Uh, that's absolutely fine with me. Um, but it doesn't lend itself very well to the knockout stages. Um, yeah, the other reason why it's hard to break ties in soccer is because for whatever reason, the soccer community has decided that a sudden death or golden goal overtime is not a good way to decide a game. Uh, instead, they wanna play a full 30 minutes, which by the way, is a ton of extra time. 30 minutes is about the maximum length of an NFL overtime for the regular season. And most of them would be decided a great deal in a great deal less time than that. Um, I think it's really quite a lot to ask the players to play a full extra 30 minutes and then have that off, oftentimes five out of five in the last World Cup, not even decide the game. Um, so anyways, here's my idea that I've come up with. Um, and this could be used for any sort of a game where you don't want to play overtime, but you do want to kind of have a fun uh, knockout style competition. You don't have enough time to do a full league type of competition and you don't want to deal with tiebreakers. There's a few other uh, things that this can do that I like, you know, in the group stage with four teams, it's possible for a team to go two and one and be eliminated. It's possible for a team to go one and two and advance. I don't really like that sort of thing. So here's the deal that I have in this format. Um, if you win a game, you will never be eliminated following that win. So if you're still playing, you control your own destiny. If you can win the rest of your games, you will advance. All right. Every game has one team that advances and one team that drops. And as you'll see, it's a double elimination or it's based on a double el elimination style tournament. So two drops and you're out of the tournament. Now, how do you drop? Well, if you lose, you drop, period, right? So if you lose twice in this, you're out. Um, and then the question is, how do you deal with draws? And I've created a system that will deal with the draws without requiring that extra time be played. Um, and I think it's an interesting system. Again, I know everyone's all traditional in soccer and many other sports, so I'm sure nobody wants to uh, actually give this a try, but I think it would be pretty neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and present it. So here's the basic idea, like I just said, it's a double elimination tournament. It follows my early crossover double elimination structure um, that you can watch my previous video on double elimination tournaments to get that. Um, and then there's this concept of color that I've introduced. You could call it whatever you want, but I've, I've called it color. So all the teams going into each game are either green, white, or red. Um, green is good, red is bad, white is kind of neutral. And what that color is going to do is help us determine what should we do if this game ends in a draw. Um, I have added another tiebreaker in this that I think is very good, but it, it's not required to the fundamentals of this. So if everyone out there hates this other idea, you can just ignore it. And that is that I do have another tiebreaker where um, the last team that scores in the game has the advantage in a draw. So if a, if a team, if a game ends up two to two between two evenly ranked teams, then whichever team scored last is gonna be the one that gets to advance. Um, you don't have to do it that way. If you really hate that idea, then we don't have to have it. I will say they use it in international wrestling and I think it works great. Um, and I think it would work really well in soccer as well. So this here is the basic idea of how it goes. And then on the next sheet, I've got kind of a simulated World Cup. It's very, very loosely based on the World Cup that just finished, but it does end up with matchups that didn't happen in real life. And so where that happens, I kind of 
looked at some historical matches or just made something up. Um, this is not intended to be any kind of a realistic projection of what would have happened if this tournament structure were used. It's simply intended to demonstrate the tournament structure itself. Okay, so there's um, you know several rules here about what you do in each round and whatnot, but here we are. So read these columns down. I'm gonna zoom in a little more so you can see it a little bit more easily. From column, from round one, and I just took games straight out of the last World Cup here. Um, and I've assigned the teams a seed, an initial seed in this tournament based on how the draw went in this World Cup. Um, again, it's not important. You could do it based on any kind of a reasonable ranking system and this should work. Uh, in my opinion, the ranking system should be based on actual results, giving priority to World Cup qualifying and competitive games and less priority to, um, you know, to friendlies and whatnot. So round one, we have these games from the group stages. Um, you'll see a few interesting little weird things here that, again, this is just about demonstrating the structure. Like it happens that the game between Brazil and Cameroon, because this is the higher seed versus the lower seed in that group, shows up in round one here. And in reality, Brazil lost that game having already qualified. So would it have gone this way if it were the game to open the tournament? Maybe not. Again, this isn't intended to be a realistic projection. But I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the overall structure of what's going on here. But in round one, from each game, one team advances and one team drops. The teams that advance go into a winner's bracket up here, and the teams that drop go into a loser's bracket down here. Okay. Now you start to see these colors. What does the color mean? Well, Mexico, they get a red color here. Why? Because they advanced even though they didn't win their game. They drew their game. All right, so they got to advance. Um, in this case, they advanced because they entered the tournament with a higher pre-tournament rank. But um, again, as long as that's done in a somewhat reasonable way, I think this does tend to factor out as the tournament goes. So in any case, they advanced. So they do get to advance, but they get a red color. And as I said, a red color is a negative in this case, right? A team like Poland, on the other hand, they dropped even though they didn't lose. They, they had a draw, but they still dropped. So they get a green which is good, right? In the second round, I just simply kept the bracket the way it is. You could do a full reseed reshuffle starting right from the second round. In reality, it may not be a bad idea because you, you don't want to see two teams that both dropped off of a draw now having to play each other with the possibility of one of them being eliminated after opening the tournament with two draws. Um, I mean, in some ways, it's not the end of the world if that happens, right? Like, if you don't want to be eliminated, then win your games. But um, still, I, I, I think it's kind of fair not to put the teams that dropped on a draw against each other. And in later rounds, I explicitly make that happen. Here, I just kind of kept the bracket the same because in reality, you'd want to do that for logistical reasons. And it also gives me a nice set of scores that I can work with uh, from the World Cup that just happened for the sake of this demonstration. All right, so again, here we have a winner's bracket. So these teams from the winner's bracket, from each game, one team advances and one team drops. All right, so here we have, say, Ecuador and the Netherlands. They had a 1-1 draw. Ecuador scored last, so I advanced them. Again, I, you don't have to do it that way. That's not critical to this, but for this demonstration, that is the way that I did that. So Ecuador, as you can see, advances here in the winner's bracket. Netherlands drops down to the loser's bracket, but you see Ecuador becomes red and Netherlands becomes green. Um, same thing with the United States and England. We have England advances and United States drops. England becomes red, United States becomes green. Here is an interesting one. We have Belgium and Croatia. You'll see Croatia is already red because they had a draw in their last game. They managed to get a second draw here. Well, they advanced off of one draw, but they're not gonna be able to advance off of a second draw. That's, it's designed deliberately that way. So on a second draw, they are going to drop, and indeed they do. Now, when they drop on that draw, they lose their red color. Red becomes white in this case. They don't become green because they were already red. They just move up one notch, right? It goes. Um, green, white, and red. Um, there's not too much of it in this demo. It is possible to end up with bright green and dark red if you need it, but, um, but that doesn't come up too often um, in these different simulations. All right, so round three, we continue on with a winner's bracket here and a loser's bracket down here in the same way. Now, the teams that drop from the loser's bracket are eliminated. Um, that's important. So in both round two and three. So it is possible to be eliminated after two games. Uh, eight teams actually get knocked out out of the 32 after just two games. I'm pretty much okay with that. I mean, there were several teams that played two games and were already going to be eliminated from the tournament anyways. 
So I'm fine with eliminating teams after just two games. And by the way, that's the way it's heading for the World Cup in uh, 2026 anyways. They're going to go up to 48 teams. Um, it might be an interesting exercise to try and put a similar demo of this system for 48 teams together. Um, it could definitely be done. So anyways, these teams are eliminated at this point. We have our final 32 through 25 ranked teams. Um, no one really cares about the way I ranked them, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's goal differential first amongst the teams that just lost and then amongst the teams that ended up being eliminated with draws. Um, you know, it, it, it's pretty straightforward. Then in the games itself, we have, so in this case, starting in round three, I started doing the reseeding. So within the winner's bracket, I did a reseed. So that's why all of these red teams get put against white teams instead of having to go against each other. And that means that if there were a draw in these games, it's very clearly defined uh, who is advancing and who's dropping, you know, because that's the first rule on advancing is that the better colored team uh, advances. So if Switzerland and Ecuador were to draw here, then Switzerland would advance. My, my rule about who scored last, that's only if the teams are already the same color anyways. Here in the loser's bracket, you'll see we've got Netherlands against Uruguay. Um, Netherlands is green, having dropped down on a draw. Uruguay is red, having lost and then had a, and then advanced on a draw, I believe, right? Uruguay, what did they do? They, they had a draw, so they got an advance on a draw, and then they lost, so they're still red. So yeah, Uruguay's going to be out on this. They're going to be eliminated on this draw. So I, I, I can't, I don't think they'd have any reason to complain, right? Because they, what have they done so far? They had a draw, a loss, and then another draw. Those are your first three games. You can't really complain that you, about being eliminated. I think it's perfectly fair. Um, so these are these um, example games that I have. I have a couple of them where we've gotten a draw amongst teams that are the same color. And so again, whichever team scored last, that's who's going to be advancing. Um, and again, this is just, these are just games that I, I just took whatever the last time these teams met in real life and plugged that in as the score. Or if the teams never met, I just made something up. Um, again, the point is just to, dem to demonstrate the, um, to demonstrate the, the structure here. So uh, in the final standings, Uruguay ends up dark red, which puts them to the last place amongst this cohort that got eliminated following round three. Um, they got dark red because they got eliminated on this draw when they were already red. So yeah, that's just, just the way that it goes. Um, and then uh, go, going on uh, round four, so here's where we do the, the crossover. So if you've seen my double elimination brackets video, you know how the crossover works, um, maybe. But the idea is that I'm at, at this point, I stop with the winner's bracket and the loser's bracket. We have just the one bracket, and then I have these second chances. So if you think about it, everyone starts the tournament with a second chance. I didn't bother to list them all in each round up to this point because we had separate winners and losers brackets. So it's pretty simple. The teams in the winner's bracket still have their second chance, and the teams in the loser's bracket don't. But at this point, we're going to cross them over. We're not going to have separate brackets anymore. So I specifically say who still has their second chances. And it's simple. It's the four teams that won out of the winner's bracket from this last round where we had that. Um, and then from here forward, I simply match. I, I ranked the teams in each round. First, green, then white, then red. Uh, then by goal differential. And then by pre-tournament rank. And then I just matched up best against worst with a rule that you can't have a rematch. Um, so if the best team had already played the worst team, then the best team would play the second worst team. Um, and then again, I just simulated these based on, uh, you know, real results or just making something up, eliminated some teams. Um, in this case here, you'll see that, uh, Belgium, for example, they lose to France, but they still have their second chance. So they're going to come in, in the next round again, um, right here. And uh, they stay red. Their color stays the same because they got eliminated on a loss. The color only changes when you have a draw. Um, and as it happens, I don't think there were any draws in this round. Um, and then in round five here, we have Mexico and England still with uh, second chances. Um, and Mexico is going to lose. So they're going to have to take their second chance to move forward. And England is also going to lose. So they're going to have to take their second chance to, go, to move forward. We have uh, Senegal knocking out Japan on that last goal rule. Um, it, sorry, I think I, I, I do indeed have this mixed up. My apologies. I've got it as Japan knocking out Senegal on this last uh, goal rule. That's why Japan's over here. Um, now, because of the nature of these second chances, the number of games that you're going to have in rounds five and six can be variable. So the rule is pretty simple. Um, in round six, 
you have to have four teams advance out of round six. And so you're going to have buys possibly. If any team carries their second chance into round six, then that team gets the priority for the buy because starting in round seven, we're going to drop double elimination and go to single elimination. So a team that hasn't used up their uh, buy, they're going to get the priority for the buy in round six. Um, in this example, all the teams do use up do use up their second chances here. So um, the highest seeded team then gets the buy. Now, if a team that um, if a team uses up its second chance to get a buy, that is to say, it never actually got a drop. It's it's advanced through every round so far, and then gets its buy uh, in round six, and now doesn't have its second chance anymore. Um, it's going to get two notches greener for that. Um, that is to say, because they've never been dropped down. Uh, they, they are going to get priority to advance on draws. Uh, in this case, Spain, um, they didn't have the second chance. They simply advanced by winning here um, and then ended up as the highest seed in this round. And so they get the buy, but they don't change their color for that because they're not using a second chance to do that. So then Spain gets a buy. Uh, these three games get played so that four teams advance from there. Then round seven is the semifinals and round eight is the finals. Um, and this is single elimination from this point on. Um, so I think that's neat. You have a nice semifinal final. You could um, decide, you know what, you want to drop the whole method of, of advancing off of draws at this point. Maybe you actually want to go back to, to the extra time system. If you want to do that, I do recommend use a better extra time system. But um, I don't, again, don't expect that anyone would ever give that consideration for whatever reason. People seem to think that it's fine the way that it is. Um, so, but, but you could do that. Um, you also could just keep at least for the semifinals, you can keep it the way it is, right? So in this game here, for example, Spain has an advantage over Portugal because um, Portugal has advanced on a draw uh, one more time than Spain has. And so therefore, if we were playing this way, you could say that, well, Spain just needs to draw to advance to the final, but Portugal has to win. Um, these two teams, Brazil and England, are actually on the same color. So, um, so a draw for them would have to be broken based on either the criteria or again, you could decide that starting at round seven, we're just gonna play extra time. Um, then we have the World Cup final right here. Uh, in this simulation, it came out to be Spain versus Brazil, and then Brazil wins and they're the champion, and that's great. So anyways, double elimination, uh, no need for extra time. Draws do get worked out. You just advance one team and drop the other, and as you're doing it, you use this color system to track which team has kind of taken advantage of advancing on draws versus which team has kind of gotten screwed over by being dropped on draws and you use the color system to kind of bring them back into even but again you will never be eliminated from this tournament following a win uh, you will never advance following a loss um, it takes two drops to eliminate you from the tournament and a, if you lose you will drop if you draw you may or may not drop if you drop once on a draw, you're less likely to drop on a draw the next time, um, but it's not guaranteed. It does depend on how the matchups go. But regardless, you're not gonna be eliminated on a single draw or a single loss, and you will never be eliminated on a win. Um, with the exception of rounds, you know, starting in the semifinals, like I say, then it becomes single elimination. So it's possible that you could win all the way through round six and then lose a game or even possibly draw a game in round seven and be dropped. Uh, drawing a game in round seven in that scenario, you're probably still going to advance if you keep these rules going because you're going to end up with the draw advantage ahead of the other teams. Uh, but losing would, would eliminate you in round seven. So can't lose at that point. But I mean, we're talking about the World Cup semifinals there. So it's, you know, hey, if you, if you lose there, you know, of course you're going to be eliminated. So anyways, um, I don't think that this is specific to soccer necessarily. I think any kind of a uh, tournament structure where you want to have a bracket, but you also have a hard time breaking ties, um, I think could, could stand to use something like this. I think that the question of who advances off a draw versus who drops off of a draw mostly tends to even out over the course of this tournament. Um, it does come out to be eight rounds instead of the current seven, but there's also, don't forget, there's also the possibility of a buy here. So it is possible a team could play eight games in this. Um, I don't really think that's a big deal, but I don't know. I mean, leave that to the experts who, who, who actually run these things. Um, so anyways, this is, um, this is my thoughts for how to do double elimination with draws as a possibility. Um, you could theoretically do the same thing on single elimination, but that would be awful, I feel like, because you just have a draw and somebody's going to just be out and there, there's no 
further ability to make up for it. Whereas in double elimination, you could always, always possibly come back. Um, so anyways, yeah, I, I hope you guys were able to follow that. Um, and by all means, please tell me what you think. And I hope everyone has a good one. Bye.